Hello, I'm Brian. Today I'm going to talk to you about debricking this Linksys E2000 router. I had previously installed DDWRT firmware on the router. I would added a second DHCP server and a second wireless network to be used with the Pi hole on the Raspberry Pi. To debrick the router, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi, a network cable, and a homemade serial adapter for the router to connect the Raspberry Pi to the router. So let's get started. There is a link in the description where you can find the original build of this cable. I only added popsicle sticks to someone else's design so it is easier to handle and so it will stay connected. This serial cable can be made from an IDE cable. Cut a strip out that is four wires wide, then strip the insulation off to expose the wire on one end of the cable. Bend the cable where it is stripped so that the wire is on the outside of the bend. Next, push the insulation back and pull the wire slightly out of the insulation. Using a piece of scrap wire, cut a small piece and place it between the wire and insulation. You can solder some connectors on the end so it can connect to the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. Leave the 3.3 volt disconnected. Using a few popsicle sticks, you can make a holder for your cable so it will fit into the WAN port. I started with cutting the end of one popsicle stick so it will fit into the lower part of the WAN port. I then cut a small square so it would fit on top of the popsicle stick, then glue the small square to the popsicle stick. Test the connection by placing the cable in the WAN port and use the popsicle stick to hold it in place. Use additional popsicle sticks to wedge it in place. Use a multimeter to test the 3.3 volt and ground are making contact. When satisfied with your cable, you can hot glue the cable to the stick. I also hot glue around the wire we stripped so that the wire doesn't get pulled out any further. You could try to flash the router by TFTP when the router first boots up. However, if your router has certain bridge settings or firewall settings, then it may not work. On my router, I entered a bridge with an additional wireless network with a separate DHCP server on the same subnet. I think I actually accidentally set it to an overlap DHCP range. On my router, it would hang after initializing the bridge. When you use the serial method, it stops shortly after startup. This is done by pressing and holding the control C in the serial terminal when the router is powering up. So you're going to want to open the Raspberry Pi configuration. Then go to Interfaces, enable the serial port, and click OK. Then you'll want to restart your Raspberry Pi. Now you're going to check, open up the terminal again. Check to make sure your serial port is listed. Be this A T T Y A M A zero. Now we're going to install. Now we're going to install T F T P and Mini Com. for that to install. Then 
we're going to edit our DHCP settings. Scroll to the bottom and enter the static P and router like I have shown. Exit, exit and save, then you're going to reboot again. Next we're going to open up Minicom. Next, you're going to power cycle the router, and you'll be able to see text if the serial port is working correctly. Okay, so now we're going to power cycle it, and we're going to press and hold Control C. Do MV RAM erase. We're going to reboot. Holding Control Z again. Look at the menu again. We're going to do a config. We're going to see that we're on the same IP address that we listed before. Actually, first we're going to go to <laughs> the directory where our firmware is. Ours is E2000 bin. We're able to ping the router. So we're going to enter in TFTP and the IP address of the router. Enter in binary. Get that, but don't hit enter yet. Over here we'll do flash T header colon flash. One RX. Press enter, then move over here and press enter. And then wait for it to upload. And uh, returned. 9.7 seconds as so we know it worked and now it's just loading the firmware And it's done. Now we just have our FTP program, and now we're going to just reboot. Now, if your router may have not been able to make it or might have been been able to make it to a certain point, so now it should be able to make it like 
if it was uh, bricked, but now it should be able to fully load. You can So now we can open up the web browser. And now we can see that we're able to access the router. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching.